And welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we are going to apply the Pythagorean theorem to a bunch of clever problems uh, using triangles. All right, so let's start with the first problem. Find the perimeter of <clears throat> uh, triangle DBC. Okay, so we're going to define CB as X. And again, so we need to find the perimeter of D, B, C. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out what C, B is. And then it's, once we have C, B, we can figure out what D, B is. Well, I know that uh, 12 squared, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So 12 squared plus uh, 10 plus X squared is going to be equal to 20 squared. So DC plus CA, DC squared plus CA squared is equal to 20 squared. Or 144 plus 100 plus 20X plus X squared is equal to 400. All right now I have 244, uh, 400 here on this side, so I'm going to subtract 400 from 244, and I get 156, if I'm not mistaken, plus 20x plus x squared is equal to zero. So I'm going to use my zero product property now to solve for x. So this ends up being a negative 156, and I can rewrite this as x squared plus 20x minus 156 is equal to zero. Now I want to find the factors of negative 156 that add to 20. And I end up with x plus 26 times x minus 6. So x is going to be equal to either negative 26 <clears throat> or 6. I know that x cannot be a negative value because it's the length, so x is going to be equal to 6. All right, so CB is equal to 6. Now I have AC squared plus, uh, I'm sorry, I have 6 squared plus 12 squared is equal to DB squared. So I have 12 squared plus 6 squared is equal to DB squared. That leaves me with 144 plus 36 is equal to db squared. 144 plus 36 is equal to 180 is equal to db squared. I take the square root of 180. I know that I have uh, 9 as a perfect square in 180. Uh, so this leaves me with, actually I have 9, let's rewrite this as 1, uh, 9 times 4, 36 times 5, so actually 36 is going to be a perfect square. I take the square root of these values, <clears throat> that's equal to db, and I end up with 6 root 5. 6 root 5 is my value for db. So I add 12, 16 is 18. My answer is 18 plus 6 root 5, which is the perimeter of dbc. Okay, next problem, I need to find hf. That's my first step. And then I need to find out if ehf is similar to triangle bgf. So I'm going to label gf as x. And I'm going to label HF as Y. And I know that this length here is going to be 21 minus X because I have GE, which is equal to uh, 21. So I know that X squared plus Y squared is equal to 10 squared, or 100. And I can rewrite this as y squared, if I subtract x squared from both sides, is equal to 100 minus x squared. I also know 
that y squared plus 21 minus x squared is equal to 17 squared. So uh, y squared plus 21 minus x squared is equal to 17 squared. And that leaves me with 17 squared is equal to 289. So that leaves me with y squared. And I think I, in the interest of space, I'm just going to erase 17 squared here and put in 289. Now I can substitute in the value of 100 minus x squared for y squared in this case and solve for x. So I'm taking this value of y squared and I'm going to substitute that value in for y squared in the second equation. So that leaves me with 100 minus x squared. Now I'm going to square 21 minus x and that gives me uh, 21 squared, 21 squared is equal to 441, so plus 441 minus 42x plus x squared uh, is equal to 289. I'm just going to leave 289 out just for a moment here so I can simplify the left-hand side of the equation. I have minus x squared plus x squared, which leaves me with no x squareds. I have 100 plus uh, 441, which leaves me with 541, and I have negative 42x. So negative 42x plus 541 is equal to 289. And then I am going to subtract 541 from both sides. So 289 minus 541 leaves me with negative 252. Now I divide both sides by negative 42. And I end up with x is equal to 6. All right, I have x equal to 6. Now I have to figure out what y is. And I notice that I have a Pythagorean triple here. I have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Or I can figure that it out by saying x squared plus y squared is equal to uh, 10 squared, x squared is 36, plus y squared, we don't know, is equal to 10. So x squared, 6 squared, plus y squared is equal to 10 squared, or 100. I subtract 36 from both sides, I have y squared is equal to 64, and y is equal to 8. So in this case, y is equal to 8. So I have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. If x is equal to 6, this is 15. And in this case, I have y is equal to 8. So I have an 8, 15, 17 triangle and a 6, 8, 10 triangle. Is EHF similar to triangle BGF? So EHF, <clears throat> triangle EHF, is that similar to triangle BGF? Uh, where is B here? That was actually a typo. It should be EHF, similar to triangle HGF. Notice there was a problem when I couldn't find the B. All right, so HGF is going to be this triangle here. And we can see that they're not similar because the ratios are not going to be similar. HG is to EH, so HG <clears throat> is to EH. HG is going to be 10, is to EH, which is 17. And does that equal... We can say HF, which is 8, so HF to GF, which is going to be 6. And we can see that this, uh, these two ratios are not in the same proportion, so we can say that the two triangles are not similar. All right, moving on to the next problem. Next problem, the perimeter of an isosceles triangle is 32, and the length of the altitude to its base is 8. Find the length of a leg. So I define x and x, and y is the base. And I'm going to just go ahead and show you the solution. I'm going to say that 2x, so the perimeter is equal to 32. 2x plus y is equal to 32. That means y is equal to 32 minus 2x. Now I know that uh, half of x is equal, or I'm sorry, half of y is equal to 16 minus x. Thanks for letting me do my so half of y squared, using the Pythagorean theorem, plus 8 squared is equal to x squared. 
So 8 squared plus 1 half y squared is equal to x squared. Right? So that leaves me with 64. And now I'm going to substitute in, if I have 1 half y, I can substitute in 16 minus x. So I take this value for a half of y, and I substitute it in to 1 half of y. So for this particular value, I substitute in 16 minus x. So I get 64 plus 16 minus x squared is equal to x squared. Now I'm going to uh, multiply 16 minus x times itself, and I get 64 plus 256 minus 32x plus x squared is equal to x squared. Well, x squared minus x squared cancels or reduces to 0. Uh, I add 32x to both sides, and I combine the like uh, constants. I get 320 is equal to 32x, or x is equal to 10. Okay, next problem. A ladder 25 feet long, J.O. is leaning against a, a wall, reaching a point 20 feet above the ground <coughs> is M.O. The ladder is then moved so that J.K. is equal to 2 P.O. So I'm going to label J.K. as 2X and P.O. as X because J.K. in this case is 2 times P.O. <coughs> right, well I know that J.M., so J.M. is this entire length here, is equal to 25 squared minus 20 squared. So jm squared plus 20 squared is equal to 25 squared. So I can figure out that jm is going to be, jm squared in this case is going to be 625 minus 400, or 225, or jm, this length here, is equal to 15. Now I have 2x plus y, so 2x plus y, this length here is 15. So 2x plus y is equal to 15. So y is equal to 15 minus 2x. So if y is equal to 15 minus 2x, I know that 15 minus 2x squared plus 20 squared, I'm sorry, plus 20 plus x squared is equal to 25 squared. So km squared plus mp squared is equal to 25 squared. That leaves me with 15 minus 2x squared plus 20 plus x squared is equal to 25 squared. So I have 25 squared km plus pm squared is equal to 25 squared, or 15 minus 2x squared plus 20 plus x squared is equal to 625. That tells me that... <clears throat> so I can simplify this to 225 minus 60x plus 4x squared plus 400 plus 40x plus x squared is equal to 625. I have 625 minus 20x plus 5x squared is equal to 625. And then I'm going to simplify that further. I subtract 625 to both sides. I end up with minus 20x plus 5x squared. I uh, factor out a 5 and I'm left with x squared minus 4x is equal to 0. x is going to be equal to 4 or 0. So x can't be equal to 0 because we said again that this value, jk, was twice that of po. So x is going to be equal to 4. Okay, uh, second to last problem, I have uh, medians of a right triangle that are drawn from the vertices of acute angles have lengths of 2 root 13 and root 73, find the length of the hypotenuse. So in this case I have two sets of two right triangles. Um, I have x squared plus 2y squared is equal to 2 root 13 squared, so I have my Pythagorean theorem in this triangle and I have my Pythagorean theorem in this bottom triangle. This gives me 2x squared plus y squared is equal to root 73. So x squared plus 2y squared is equal to 2 root 13 squared. 2x squared plus y squared is equal to root 73 squared. I simplify uh, these equations. I have x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 52. 4x squared plus y squared is equal to 73. Now I'm going to use a process of elimination. And I'm assuming that you understand the process of elimination. I'm going to multiply the top uh, equation by a constant of negative 4. That gives me negative 4x squared minus 16y squared is equal to negative 208. I keep the bottom equation the same, 4x squared plus y squared is equal to 73, and then I combine the two equations. The combined two equations gives me 0x squared minus 15y squared is equal to negative 135. Let me just put a negative here. Y squared then is equal to 9, so Y is equal to 3. If I have Y equal to 3, 
I can substitute that value back into any one of these two equations and solve for x, and I end up with x is equal to 4. Okay, the final uh, problem, I have quadrilateral quad has vertices negative 7, 1, 1, 16, 9, 10, and 1, negative 5. What figure best describes quad, and what's the parameter? All right, if I use my distance formula, I can figure out that the distance between Q and U is 17. I use a Pythagorean theorem. I use a Pythagorean theorem. And then also using the Pythagorean theorem, and which is ultimately the distance formula, I can figure out that UA is going to be equal to 10. So if I perform the same functions for QD and also for AD, I'll find out that AD is also equal to 17 and QD is also equal to 10. So I have all four sides that are going to be the same, I'm sorry, the opposite sides are going to be the same length. Now if I figure out the slopes of QU and DA, I see that the slopes are the same. And if I figure out the slopes of UA and QD, I see that the slopes are the same as well. So I have a quadrilateral, which is a parallelogram, opposite sides are going to be um, both congruent and they're going to be uh, the same slope. So I have a parallelogram. I can see that uh, 6 eighths is not, negative 6 eighths is not the opposite reciprocal of 15 eighths. So I don't have a rectangle because these angles here are not at right angles. If they were at right angles, then my uh, slope for UA would be negative 8 over 15. So all I'm left with is a parallelogram. I can go back to the second, um, uh, I'm sorry, the first page that we talked about when we figured out the distances, and I can figure out the perimeter because QU is 17, DA is 17, QD is 10, and also UA is 10. So that leaves me with a perimeter of 54. So we figure out that uh, the figure is a uh, parallelogram because the opposite sides are congruent and the slopes are congruent. So opposite sides are congruent, slopes are congruent. And then finally, we know it's not a rectangle uh, or a rhombus because in the case of the rhombus, the sides would be congruent. I don't have congruent sides. In the case of the rectangle, I would have uh, a right angle, but I don't have a right angle because QA, the slope of QA is not the opposite reciprocal of UA.